Hello friends, today we're going to talk about human design. We're going to go over the centers. We're going to talk about what it means to have it defined or in color and what it means to have it white or undefined and how does that affect your conditioning when you're by yourself or when you have other people around. So if you want to know more about this tool and how you can use it to decondition yourself and thrive by finding your true center and alignment, keep watching this video. So when you go to get your chart, you can get it in jovianarchive.com, get your free chart and you scroll through it, you're going to see that you have this body graph and in this body graph you have nine centers. And depending on your personal profile, they can be in white or they can be in color. So what we're going to talk about today is what does it actually mean that they're white or in color. This affects your type and strategy and authority, but also each of the centers has a particular characteristic that can affect the way that you relate with yourself and others. So we're going to start at the base with the root center. And what does the root center mean? Here we have the guidelines in the screen and we have used the keywords from Gene Keys along with the knowledge from human design. I love mixing both of these. So the root center is a motor. What does it mean to be a motor? A motor is a center that gives you drive to act, gives you energy to act. And in the case of the root center, it's a pressure center. It gives you the pressure to do things, the drive to do things, the drive to grow, to evolve, to adapt. Uh, but there's, there's a big difference when you have it defined and undefined. If you have the root center defined, this pressure is healthy for you. This pressure to achieve things, to finish things, this drive to be productive and grow and evolve. And you can use this stress uh, constructively in a productive way in order for you to achieve millions of different things like either working out or going forward in your work or your studies or anything that you can think of you always have this constant pressure to grow and keep going further uh, but be careful though because the shadow of this uh, means that you are repressing this pressure maybe you don't want to be a uh, um, a burden for others in a certain way you know like you don't want to overwhelm others with that pressure so you have to be very careful of this of not putting pressure into other people you know uh, it's, it's something also that uh, not acting on that pressure on yourself on that pressure they have to grow and just being stagnant can bring problems to your health on the other hand if you have this center undefined or in white it means that you don't really have an internal pressure to finish things an internal pressure to really do things and if you do you're acting from conditioning, from not self. This means that it's not aligned, it's off of your center and it can bring health problems, burnout, a host of different things. And we're gonna talk about all the not self themes in each of the centers. So how does this manifest when it's unhealthy? It's that you're trying to do things and finish them even though you don't really feel like it. You're putting this pressure on yourself to finish things. It's kind of like, ah, I just want to get rid of it. You just want to get rid of the pressure. That, that's how it looks on the shadow level. Um, and the strategy for you here is to never be allowed to be pressured into anything. Never to be rushed into anything. Never to, um, yeah, never to be pressured into doing something that you don't feel like doing right now and take really your time to finish your projects or whatever it is that you're involved with. It's interesting to note that this center is aligned with the adrenal glands, which is a, a stressor in the body, something that gives us that go, that cortisol release to move into something else. Now, I have something interesting for you. If you're finding all this information interesting, I have made some guides that you can print at home or use on your computer. I'm gonna show them to you now with all of the centers, with all the corresponding information, with all the gates, you can print them in a poster like this, or you can print them in cards. So you can have all the information right here in the cards. And you can have all these reminders for when you're studying your profiles or your friends. And it's a really great resource. It looks great and it gives you access to the information really quick. I have not only included the information for each of the centers, but also I have this amazing poster yeah, for each of the lines. If you're studying human design or the gene keys, it's amazing. To have this resource as well so i have made this for you i put a link in the comments if you want to get them so please do because you will support the channel and also me putting out more of this amazing content now moving on to the next center the sacral 
And this is a defining center because it's the center that would make you a generator or not, or any of the other types. And what is this center about? This center is about life force, about vitality, about basic uh, uh, capacity, energy, to do things and work in the world. And you can see from the Gene Key's uh, keywords that you can go from reacting to things in an unhealthy way to responding to being stimulated by things in the world. This would be your authority if you're in the sacral center. To just flowing, to flowing to the rhythms of life and the contact that you have with life and all the other beings that are around you. So how does it look when it's defined, when it's in color? You have consistent energy. You have this output that is consistent that you have every day that allows you to do work. Uh, it's the kind of people that can work a normal job like eight hours a day, five times a week and repeat and have two weeks vacation and you can just keep going. As long as that work is rewarding for you, you can completely keep doing it. However, you have to respond to this. It's not something that you do with your mind, but it's a really embodied thing and you should feel it in your belly when there is uh, something coming at you. Let's say like someone tells you, let's go eat some pizza. And then you respond, do you feel like pizza? Yeah, actually I feel like pizza. Or do you feel like joining me in this work, uh, a proposal, let's say, and you feel like, uh-huh or uh-uh. So that's, that's the strategy of the sacral, just responding with very basic sounds, very embodied feeling and acting from that place. Uh, but it can be a shadow if you're committing to something from your mind and your body's not 100% into it. So be patient. Uh, keep engaging with life but don't make decisions with your mind always respond from uh, your sacral from this guttural response and the shadow also is initiating things initiating things when you shouldn't when you should just be responding to whatever is happening and, or doing work that you do not enjoy that's an, another problem it can get you really frustrated uh, job that you're not feeling really satisfied with and the last thing about the defined sacral is that you have this energy but sometimes you go through cycles and these cycles can be you're doing great and you feel like you're growing and evolving and then you go into a plateau and when you go into this plateau you might feel that you're stuck but you need to keep going you need to keep working with this keep digesting integrating this and then you will move in to the next uh, high let's say the next plateau but it's very normal for generators that you will have this feeling of being stuck and then you will quit so that's something to take into account. It's the main motor of the body. It's one of the main motors. It's the main energy battery that we have. Now, what happens if you don't have it? If you don't have it, that means you're either a manifester, a projector, or a reflector. And you do not have consistent energy. If you're a manifester, you will work in bursts. And you have a huge burst of energy, and then you need to rest. If you're a projector, you will have less energy. It comes and goes, and it's never stable. And something similar applies according to your transits if you are a reflector. So what do you do with this when you have inconsistent energy? You have to know when enough is enough. You have to know when you are going to burn out. You have to know when you're pushing and you really don't have the energy for this. So it's really important for you if you have an undefined sacral center to know when to stop and know when to relax. You have to rest you have to go to bed before you're tired when you're already feeling like you're winding down you should already go to bed and start resting and it's recommended for you to take naps during the day also have healthy boundaries because you will see that maybe other people that have a sacral define are with you and they can go for the whole day go out go on an excursion go to dinner and then go partying afterwards but you don't have that kind of battery so you need to have boundaries within yourself and really know yourself so you don't burn out um, so that's basically the shadow of the sacral is burning out, working too hard, not knowing when enough is enough. And you should have healthy boundaries and uh, developed awareness of when you need to stop and rest. Now, the next center is the solar plexus or the center of emotions. And this is also a very interesting center. Its function is to gain a sense of emotional clarity. So when you're uh, when you have a, an emotional center defined, you're always going to go through an emotional wave. The wave goes up and goes down. You go from joy to despair and you go from irritation to elation and all around. But when you go through this up and down of the wave, at some point you gain clarity. When you're just not riding the intensity of it, 
you reach a middle ground and then you gain clarity. And this is the whole theme of the emotional center. If you have the emotional center defined, you're always gonna be riding this wave one way or another. Now, it's very important for you if you have this to not make decisions on the height or the low of the emotions because that is gonna lead you astray. It's very important for you to only make decisions once these waves have passed, they have mellowed out and you're in the middle. But the shadow of this is being impatient, is making decisions when you're super excited or you're in the lows of the lows, and this usually brings uh, dire consequences in your life. This is both an awareness and a motor. So it's an awareness center in the sense that it brings information to you in the same way that you're gonna see later the spleen and the agnya center, the mind, is gonna bring you. And at the same time, it's a power powerful force that will drive you. The emotions are a powerful force that can make you do things and achieve things in life and go and take a direction, especially if you have it connected to the throat. Now, what happens if you have it undefined, if you have it in white, then you don't have this consistent wave of emotions happening within you. You might find that you're a more quiet person emotionally. However, it's very easy for you to get influenced by someone else's emotions. If you are, you might notice that you are, you are a quite uh, quiet person by yourself, but if you are with this particular friend or with your family or someone else, you suddenly start amplifying the emotions. Let's not forget that the open centers not only mean that you don't have that particular frequency, but you also amplify whatever is in the environment. So in this case, you will take in and amplify the emotions of others. The thing is, you don't, you do not take it personal. You try to let it pass you by, you know, like you're aware that these emotions are not yours and you let the wave go, but you not make decisions from it. Now, it can be very overwhelming for you if you are around emotional people feeling this wave and feeling conditioned by it. So it can also happen that you avoid confrontation or avoid uh, communicating with people, telling your truth to people because you are afraid of that emotional backlash that might come from this person, this intensity. So it's something to take into account, into consideration in all of your relationships. Moving on to the next center. The spleen is your basic center of intuition. It's a very primal, non-mental, very embodied intuition. It can tell you yes or no right now in the moment. If you have a defined spleen, you have a very, very um, developed intuition. You will know when you are going somewhere or you are entering a place, if you have this response to say like, no, you shouldn't go to that place, there's danger, or if there's like this spider sense kind of thing, the spleen always know. And if you don't listen, maybe you will get sick from someone that was there that was sick, or you will trip into something, or you will have an accident a little bit later, something might go wrong because your body really has this intelligence, this thing of telling you right now in this moment what you should be doing or not. Another thing, it has to do with your immune system and your overall health, really depending on if it's defined or connected to the sacral or the root or the throat, it can be a little bit different. For instance, if it's connected to the root, it's a little bit more sensitive than if it has a definition in the sacral or in the throat. So the shadow of this, so we said you have a strong immune system, a strong health, that you can be one of those people that is um, taking that for granted and really pushing your health and really pushing the boundaries of what you can get away with. It's this kind of person that can be a smoker and eating pizza every day and all of that sugar every day and is like 90 years old. So they really push it and sometimes they get lucky, but sometimes by pushing it too hard, they can get into trouble. So that's the shadow of the defined spleen. And what happens when it's undefined? If it's undefined, you don't have a consistent physical well-being, you might be prone to getting more sick. And what is really important for you is to not be spontaneous. You're not a person that should be taking decisions on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. If someone tells you right away to do something, you should wait. Depending on what other centers you have defined, you should use your sacral or your emotional center or your G center or whatever that is that makes your authority and use that, but do not make decisions in the moment. It's completely the opposite as if someone has the defined spleen, they can make a decision right now. You should always take your time. That's a strategy for the undefined spleen. Also, it's very easy for you if you have an undefined spleen to see who is healthy 
to really tune into people and say like, oh, this is a healthy person. This is a person that has healthy habits. You can really feel that with the openness of your spleen. However, the problem that can come with this is that you can tune into people or, or hang out with people that are not healthy, that are not good for you, relationships that are not serving you and can take you into a wrong path. So you have to be very aware of this thing. Uh, and also the strategy has to do again with uh, not making spontaneous decisions because they can always take you into a, not the best most aligned place this is also an awareness center as the same as the solar plexus and the agnia they are three centers that bring you information from the environment and it's linked with the lymphatic and the immune system obviously we can see in the gene keys words it goes from alarm which is more like this fear this basic fear moving into intuition and then just presence just being present in the moment and hyper aware of your circumstances and what needs to happen by moment by moment let's move on to the next one the ego center what is the ego center it goes from the ego from being as this self-identified person this egocentric person to willpower to wanting to achieve things with this willpower and then the complete surrender into the divine will how does that work this center, when you have it defined, will make you want to achieve things, will make you want to prove yourself, will make you show everyone that you can do it. This like, is a superstar kind of center, if you have it defined, it will give you power to achieve things, to conquer things. It's this kind of person that's saying, like, I can do it, I want to do it, I am here. You know, this Cristiano Ronaldo kind of character, if you know what I mean. Uh, and you should use this. You should not allow anyone to tell you like you're egocentric or whatever that is. You should pursue your goals. It's healthy for you to go in this way, to have clear goals and you con this consistent access to having to prove yourself. The problem with this, it's overvaluing your own importance. Sometimes you can get into a little bit of a delirium, you know, and thinking like you are doing or being more than you actually are. And you have to be sensitive around other people also with this in the relationships that you are constructing. At the same time, if you allow this to be suppressed, it can also be unhealthy. It can bring health issues of any kind if you allow yourself to be put down and not let this ego really shine. This is also a motor in the same way that the root is a motor that gives you pressure to act and the emotions give you pressure, uh, give you energy to do things from this emotional place. And then the sacral gives you this energy, this physical vitality, the ego gives you this drive to achieve that comes from a completely different place but what happens if you have it undefined if you have it in white then you may be a person that doesn't feel like needs to achieve anything like really do you have nothing to prove there's nothing that you need to achieve in this life if you have a completely open ego you know if you have one of or two of the gates open you can go deeper into the study and see what parts of the ego really uh, are yours you know, what, what do you have to prove? But if it's completely open, there's nothing to prove for you. And enjoy being around other people that have the defined egos and they need to achieve something. But don't let yourself be dragged by them. You have nothing to prove. You're completely fine the way that you are. That's the strategy for the ego. It's related to the thymus, the gallbladder, the heart and the stomach. So Usually, if you're, um, whenever I mention anything about these centers being related to an organ, it means that if you are not careful, if you're not following the authority of the center, you might have an imbalance or even some disease on one of these centers. Let's move on to the next one. The G center. The G center goes from me to self to oneness. And it's your basic sense of direction, love and identity. It's the home of the magnetic mon monopole and this is the thing that drives you in life, the thing that brings you into contact with all the things that you need to come into contact with. It's like a magnetic pole that attracts you to the other things that you need to be in contact with in your life. Now, what happens if you have it defined or undefined? If you have it defined, you have a fixed sense of self. You have a very stable, concrete identity. You know who you are. And you have a very clear sense of direction, of self-love, and where you want to go in your life. And it's ideal for you to follow this inner compass and trust that you can always return to this place. But it's dangerous. The shadow of the shadow aspect of this is ignoring this deeper identity, this person that you really know that you are in order to please other people. So you have to be aware of that. Now, if you have it undefined, 
uh, you don't have a fixed sense of identity. You can be one of these persons that can be a chameleon, that can be a different person on, on a, any given environment. You know, if, if you go and meet this couple of friends, you are this person, and then you meet this other group of friends, and then you feel completely different, and you might feel like you live many different lives inside of one life. And you, that's not a problem for you. That's completely fine, and that's something that you should allow and let be in your life. Like, you're never going to have a fixed sense of identity. You're just going to change uh, with whoever you meet, and even with the phases of life and the transits that go on every day. Uh, the problem with this is that you might get lost into the personality of another person. You might believe that you are this kind of person, but you're really grabbing and copying this external authority figure. It might be your parents or a friend that you really admire or maybe even a famous person. So be careful with that if you're trying to really be someone that you are not because you have this uh, undefined, this open G center. And it's also associated with the liver and the blood, the throat. Now, this is the most important center because it has connections to almost all of the body graph and it really makes a big difference if you're a person that you should be taking initiative in your life or not. Only the manifestors and the manifesting generators have motors connected to the throat. And these are the people that you should think of as the entrepreneurs or the people that are initiating things. The rest of the people, we should take a waiting role and respond or wait to be invited through life. Now, what does the throat mean? It's communication and at the same time it's action. It's the ability to speak and also the ability to act. If you have it defined, it means that you have a consistent ability to either speak or act. And this depends on what it is connected to and what are you going to be speaking from. So if you have it connected to your agnya, it's going to be a way in which you can communicate through your thoughts and your mind. But if you have it connected to your G, it's more your identity that is going to speak. Same as you're speaking through your uh, solar plexus, it's going to be your emotions that are going to come out and go out in your discourse and in your actions. You should always trust the voice of the throat and depending on each of the channels that are there, you can see that it might have a different effect or, or a different type of voice. And you are free to act, but always if it's connected to the throat and using your authority and strategy. The problem is talking too much or diluting the power that you have to talk or to act. And again, if it's not connected to a motor, it can be problematic for you to initiate. Now, what happens if you have it undefined? This is a person that doesn't have a consistent way to communicate and to act. This is a person that, for this very same reason, might be wanting to draw attention. The throat, the open throat, really loves attention, really loves people paying attention to them. You know, and this can be a person that speaks too much or is trying to take over the room in a group conversation but doesn't really have the energy to sustain it. So some person might be talking the whole night with the defined throat and it's fine. And another person tries to do the same, but then is depleted, completely exhausted, or has health problems or something like that. So you have to be very aware of this thing of wanting to attract attention. Your default state should always be silent or a more retreat approach. You should be invited or you should respond to whatever is happening in the world. It can also manifest on fear that you're not gonna know what to say if you have a test or a speaking arrangement or something like that you can be afraid that you're not going to be able to voice what you know or what's your truth that's also a trait of the open throat let's move on to the next one the agnya center or the third eye this goes from the shadow of anxiety to thinking clearly and then pure awareness now contrary to what most people might think the agnya is not supposed to be a thing where you should be taking decisions from. It's just a center to organize and absorb and integrate information. It's an awareness center. It's only supposed to be a place where information is gathered, stored, and integrated. Now, what happens when you have the Agnya defined? You have a very structured, um, stable way of thinking. You're always gonna think in the same way. Your thoughts are gonna be organized in the same way and uh, independently of if who you are with or where you are with of the conditions. Like you have a very um, stable mind and this can seem to others like if you're a really smart person or you have really good memory or any of those traits. And as long as you use that mind just for communication and research and not for action, you're in the right place. But again, you should never be too over-reliant on the, on the mind and use it to you know, the mind is supposed to be used for small things, like take a bus to go from here to here, 
uh, I need to fix this thing. You fix it, it's a simple thing, but sometimes we try to use it to solve the big questions in life, the big decisions, and that's where the mind is overwhelmed. Where it really cannot foresee the myriad circumstances that involve all these decisions, and it's trying to help you, but it gets overwhelmed, and you get burned out, and you get anxiety, and you get all of these problems. So what happens when it's undefined? Then you don't have a stable way of thinking. Your way of thinking is more here and there. You might be a person that one day you feel like, ah, I feel so smart today. And then another day you're asked the same question and you don't know how to answer. It comes and it goes. Your intelligence comes and it goes. It is also very influenced by the energies around you. Again, as any other center. If you have an open center, you're going to take the energies from the outside and amplify them. So it can be very easy for you to be influenced mentally by a charismatic person with a defined agnya in the room. So be aware of those things when you're by yourself. How do you think? How do you react? How do you, um, what kind of life views do you have? And when we're, you're with this X or Y person, what happens in your mental field? Be aware of that condition. Again, it's the same. It's not a place to make decisions from. So even more than the defined agnya, you should never make decisions from your mind. Um, be careful about identifying with someone else's ideas in a fixed way. Be careful about worrying and anxiety. You shouldn't be projecting yourself into the future or the past too much. It's pointless. You're not going to bring much from that except more stress and anxiety. And also, you shouldn't try to be certain of things or mentally consistent. Like That's not going to ever work for you. You're always going to have this thing of, really, I don't know. Let's see how it goes. That's the, the strategy for the undefined agnya. Finally, we have the head. The head is a pressure center in the same way that the root is a pressure center that forces you or pushes you to do things. The head pressures you to think. It's the pressure from consciousness to find its way into the form. It's the pressure to ask questions, it's the doubts, and going through these cycles of doubts and confusion through clarity has these waves too. It's trying to make sense of things, it's trying to figure out the answers. Now, what happens if you have a defined head? It's, you have this continual pressure to think, to find answers, but you can also inspire people with this. You can ask the right questions. You can bring a lot of inspiration and insight to people having this. And you just accept the strategies to accept this mental pressure without the need to turn it into action. Remember, the head is not connected to any of the other centers other than Agnya, which is thinking, and we should never be taking action from here, but from the lower centers. That's where most of the authorities are. Now, what happens with this? What's the shadow of this? It's trying to release this pressure through action. That's what we just mentioned. If you are trying to release this pressure to find the answer through action, you might be making inappropriate decisions, you might get anxiety, you might get out of balance, you might get very impatient, and that's not what we want. And what happens if we have it undefined? What happens if it's white? Well, you don't have this mental pressure so much. It comes and it goes. You can have these moments when you have the pressure to find the answer. It's usually conditioned from the outside. And some other times where it just, it, it's not so important to find the answer to the solutions. But something you can see is when someone is inspiring. When someone brings some important questions, some important things into life, wants to really answer some important matter of, of life, you can really see this. You can really see when people are inspiring. You can really draw this in and suck this energy in and, and even use it for yourself. But again, you do not act on this mental pressure. It's a waste of energy. Again, it will bring you anxiety. It will bring you uncertainty. It will really bring a lot of pressure in your head that you should be ignoring. The meditation practice is great for this. To be able to witness when you're in this state of overthinking, overanalyzing, trying to find answers that are not important. It's really, uh, it's really good to have a meditation practice just for this. Uh, yeah, the main shadow pattern is trying to find a problem that is not yours. That's not yours to solve. That, that's the main shadow pattern of the head and also being overwhelmed by doubts being paralyzed and frozen by doubts when you should be using your strategy and authority to make these decisions. That was the last of the uh, centers. I hope you enjoyed the journey we went through today. We will be making a longer course with my friend Fabrice from Your Genetic Matrix on each of the centers going through the gates and going to the connections to the other centers, the authority types, a much more developed course. And I'm gonna put the link in the description. Don't forget to check out 
the guides, as I told you earlier, that we have all these guides with the amazing centers, with all the zodiac signs, the gene keys information for each of the gates, with the lines and everything. It's called the design keys. I'm gonna put also a link in the description so you can check it out and support the channel. And if you liked it, of course, share it, subscribe, like it, it will help a lot. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you soon.